6,615 pounds as we see it here today. That is family camping done right. The 287 BHDS Freedom Express here at Haylitz. And this is like if you take a very popular little 257 and juice it up on steroids. Give it a big super slide, a sofa that you could make a hide a bed or a theater seat like we're going to see here today. It's taller inside, longer true queen bed versus a lot of things. Obviously, a beautiful windshield. Asdell under the fiberglass skin to keep the weight down and to help keep the water out of this thing. And I tell you what... Every time I think Freedom Express has just like really nailed it, they just keep cranking it up a notch. Getting rid of the carpet in the slide and all of the storage in this thing. The storage in this thing is next level. There's just insane amounts of cabinet space in here. And then they even juiced up the bedroom with that easy kind of flip job bed they have. They have an improved outside kind of camp kitchen situation. Wide stance axles for easier towing. This, this is phenomenal. And I don't know if it's because of that new carpetless slide system or just the upgraded theater seat that we got going on here, but man, right when you walk in the door, just bam, like the little accent lights in the cabinet. You can already see like this thing's detailed and uh, like this is good. There is a lot of really high level thought and function that went into this one. I, I actually get a lot of criticism from the other brands that we carry here at Halid RV. They're like, you know, you really kind of rant and rave about those Freedom Expresses a lot. Like, yeah, they're really good. Like, as a person who actively camps, I look at what they did here, and like, this is a brand that really personally speaks to me in a way that not a lot of other campers do. I'm a big fan. Carpetless, completely ventless flooring. Uh, of course, a heated enclosed underbelly for some seasonal comfort, but the taller ceiling and the lighter colors they work for me. They make this thing look and feel just absolutely enormous. You see all the windows. You see how all the windows through the slide here open for some fantastic airflow. We've got those sealed edge thermal foil counters making it so that I'd like to blame my kids so that if my kid spills something, it's not going to be a problem. But, you know, mostly me. I'm kind of a klutz that way. Um, it, of course, it's a bunkhouse. But if we need to, we can always fold down the uh, dinette to get that extra, extra sleeping space. And a quick note. We have upgraded this one to the theater seat that we're looking at right there because that'll put you right across from the entertainment center, which is nice. But there is a standard jackknife sofa there that you could sleep on. And there is also a hide-a-bed option that you could uh, express if you were so inclined. But the thing is, everybody and their brother builds a layout like this. We've got campers like this from, uh, I mean, Jayco and Keystone and, and Forest River and like everybody. We have it in laminated. We have it in stick and tin. And they all do their own little different things. Why would you go with the Freedom Express version? And the thing is, something that's not as obvious at a glance is that this one has more storage than almost anybody else who makes this model. But the trick is, I don't know that you naturally see that just uh, at a glance here. So I want to really take some time to open all this up. If you're not looking for this kind of detail, you know, feel free to just... Hit the fast forward button to skip through the video a little bit, but I think that if you're a real serious buyer, you're going to appreciate all the extra information that we give you. Like the, you know, this is a walk-in closet, a walk-in pantry. Those are removable shelves so that if you want to rearrange things a little bit, you can. And I love that. So that if, if you tell the kids, hey, get in there and get your, I don't know, Gushers fruit snacks or your gummy bears or whatever. Tell Uncle Josh to get his gummy bears and sit in the corner and be quiet. <laughs> you have a place to do that, but... You can hang some uh, coats in here. You could turn this into a clothes closet. Amazing shoe garage kind of space. Not to mention, for the little quick daily flip-flops and stuff, under the entertainment center here, you got yourself a handy little shoe space. Great little phone charging station right below that television also. You see all those plugs in there. Now, this right here, this is the difference. Because uh, if you're noticing, we've got that walk-in pantry, and then we have a dedicated additional pantry right here. If you're really paying attention and you're comparing against most floor plans, most floor plans don't have this right here. This floor plan is slightly longer than a lot of people who make this model. It might be a little bit heavier. It might be a little bit more expensive, but it has a little bit more to offer. That's one of the things I like about it. Kind of like the optional 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridge that we're looking at here. Standard in this model would be an eight cubic foot two-way gas absorption. So if you're still looking for that, if you prefer it um, like, you want to go 
boondocking and you don't want to have to uh, really rely on the sun, you don't want to have to rely on a generator, then maybe that two-way fridge is a good option for you here. I know around here in the Midwest, like this is 99% of the time the way people are wanting this thing right here. Um, and I tell you, if there's one thing I would change, and I'm open to feedback, please leave me some comments. Let me know, like, what do you like? What would you change given the opportunity? Me, I would get rid of that shelf and I would turn this into a wide open wastebasket space. There's a little pocket down here where they just didn't want to waste anything. What would you put there? That's an interesting size. And those are protective panels so that like shifting cargo doesn't smash up stuff like your water pumps, by the way. That's why that's down there. But you'll notice uh, you've got the all plywood drawers here. Compared to a lot of things in this class, to save a buck or two, manufacturers are very often inclined to give you particle board beaver puke drawers with a sticker wrap on them. <laughs> you don't see any of that here. It's all real plywood. And of course, the utensil drawer with, uh, you know, Kung Fu grip. We can take out this little insert right here when it, it's easier with two hands. I'm not left-handed. It kind of pinches a little bit when you do that. But hey, if you want to take that out, put that on your table or just get rid of it, you can. There's another one of those in the camp kitchen under there. That is the best use of space I've ever seen under the sink. That's a stainless sink uh, inside those split covers, by the way. And, you know, that way, no matter if the sink's in play, if the stove's in play, you've still got that nice corner space over there. Um, up top here, and we talked about the cabinetry. You can see all hit, well, I guess you can't see them because they're primarily hidden, but hidden hinges. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Pocket screwed cabinetry, hardwood cabinet door frames. And people often look around at this. They say, oh, I love that big backsplash, but where are the outlets? They have to kind of hide them under the overheads here. The walls aren't quite thick enough. The sidewall isn't. Uh, the sidewall isn't quite thick enough to install an outlet. If there was a second change I would make, I'd probably leave that up there. I would personally move that outlet to this wall in that corner down low so that short cord appliances could reach that. Is it stopping me from camping? Is it stopping me from choosing this RV? No, but uh, I want to make sure I point those things out for you. Oh crap, I screwed myself up. I didn't set this up the way I was going to. Pardon me. Derp. Drives me crazy when I do that. I have this big reveal planned. I was going to pan the camera over. You're going to see this table stick it up and you're going to be like, whoa. But no, instead you're like, oh. Okay, neat, the table moves. <laughs> By the way, one switch activates all the accent lighting, whether it's above the TV, the cabinets above the sofa, or the little kind of runner lights right there. Or that's, it's just enough for like um, nighttime navigation. That table can go outside, but you're gonna find later, this RV has its own built-in factory picnic table, which is cool. Uh, sliding pocket privacy door here, so nobody has to worry about somebody walking in on you in a <clears throat> compromising situation. And this time I did remember to do my big reveal. The Freedom Express Easy Bed Lift System right here. I think this is one of the cleanest, best executed underbed storage uh, arrangements I've ever seen. That is a 60 by 80 True Queen bed, by the way. But if you need to, you can flip that thing up easily. You see the aluminum structure in there, get it out of the way. Both sides of the bed have these handy dresser drawers that open outward. So you, you can lift the bed, you don't have to. Now, if you notice, there's little shoe garage spaces under it. Those are actually miniature pass-throughs. So there's some interesting things you can do there. Like maybe, uh, you know, you could open that uh, outside door. You could actually maybe run a fishing pole under that just for transit purposes. There's a nice little pocket in the middle if you need to uh, have a little doggy bed or a cat litter box or something in there. And the other thing is that these are heavy duty reinforced. That's not just a single Luan panel. So you can use that legit as a bench. If you need a place to like set down, set a laundry basket across from you, you can set the folded clothes up there in that little nook. It gives you a place to actually be able to do some things that, man, travel trailers, you just don't normally get that kind of function out of a bedroom, you know? And what's fantastic is they do all of that, plus they do all the normal storage that you expect out of a camper's bedroom, you know? The side stands over here on both sides, by the way, have household and USB outlets, so you don't have to only sleep on one side or the other to charge your phone. There are uh, like pleated kind of blackout shades for all of the windows in this, whether it's that windshield, anything. Um, up top here, that extra vent lets in just some extra light. You can use it for airflow. And um, it takes a little doing, but it's not a major job. If you wanted to upgrade that to be like a, a powered vent fan, that's the kind of stuff we can assist you with here at Halid RV. Give you a little view here if you are chilling in bed at the end of the night. You want to put a TV against the wall over there. You got a perfect place for it. And notice how the entry doors have full windows. 
So if you're in here, you got this sliding pocket door shut, and you hear one of the kiddos screaming bloody murder, maybe you're sitting here folding laundry or something, well, you can stand up, you can peek out the window real quick and decide, do you got to go bust some heads or do you got to go bandage some heads? Because <laughs> have you ever noticed it's always one of the two? It's either, well, I'm going to have to go give my kid a tune-up or, ooh, my kid got tuned up. I'm going to have to go fix this. <laughs> now, remember, we're looking at the height, uh, theater seat, rather. Theater seat option applied to this instead of the hide -a bed instead of the standard jackknife sleeper sofa. And the reason I thought about this is you've got those twin double-double beds over there. We've got a 60 by 80 True Queen up front. We can, well, the dinette too, I suppose, but even without the slide out and play, you can sleep four to six bigger people in this very easily. So isn't it nice to have that easy direct view of the entertainment center from the theater seat? That was my logic here, but I'm always open to input. Like, what sofa would you prefer if you were buying this? Did we do it right? Should we have gone high to bed? Should we have gone, um, just left it a jackknife sofa? You know, should we have just saved a couple bucks doing that? I don't know. I'm always looking at, uh, for input there. Now, uh, this is an interesting thing I want to point out too. Notice both of the windows uh, for the bunks open for great airflow here, which is a nice touch. Not every brand does that. They both have their own privacy shelves. They also have their own separate shades or, well, curtains here, privacy curtains. So that uh, where that's really nice is that if one of the kids is on the lower bunk and they're trying to yank the curtain over, uh, they tend to pull down more than they pull sideways. And you don't want them to rip it out of the ceiling, you know? Now you just don't got to worry about that. By the way, you might be looking at this because they got away from that rock climber wall. And uh, they went to a removable ladder. And at a glance, you might look at it and say, yeah, but isn't it kind of in the way? So I want to kind of put it to the test here. Hey, Magic Mike. You got a second, buddy? Come in here real quick. I'm not even going to tell you why. Just come on in here. All right, now, now, was that difficult? Not at all. <laughs> Easiest thing I've done all day. <laughs> We're good. That's all I needed. I just wanted to show people that you can walk right past this ladder, no big deal. How about we get a second shot with you on the way out? We can do that, just like this. <laughs> I'm a ham and you're a cheese, and together, that's one mighty fine sandwich. Thank you, buddy. Yes. And that was Magic Mike America, ladies and gentlemen. He is one of our uh, part specialists. He does our uh, quality control check-ins, you know, making sure that everything looks pretty good on the service level. After this, we'll actually pull the RV in and do effectively like a full burn. We will check all of the appliances. And then before you take it home, we do that again so that everything has been checked two or three times before you ever have to worry about like, Hey, is this in good working order? You know, we want this to be a successful, positive camping experience for you. So, you know, we put the extra time and effort into it. Decent leg room in here. I mean, not too bad overall. I like the little rack over here where you could uh, hang a couple towels after you get out of the shower. And with that taller ceiling height, we have ourselves a taller shower height where a big idiot like me can stand in here and not have to worry about scuffing off the rest of my scalp in this thing. Now, I'd like to take the extra time to close the slides up to show you what they're going to look like in travel mode. And I hope you appreciate the extra time and effort because, you know, it takes a minute here. But, and this one, you look at it, you're like, oh, man, unless I'm going to do the Dukes of Hazard yee-haw, there ain't no way I'm getting from the living room to the bedroom, will I, Paul? A apparently, you're Sue Ellen from the Waltons. I don't know. Anyway, my point is, no worries. Remember that we have that second door right up here in the bedroom. And if you're not a big fan of that, if you're like, I don't like the idea of people coming in and out. You see that red switch? That's a deadbolt. You can just straight shut it down. You don't got to worry about people walking in on you. So the question naturally begs then, from the main entry door, what can I get to? And I think the answer is the majority of anything that you really, really need to. That giant closet and pantry by the door, the second pantry over here, in case you do utilize that as a closet. The majority of our overhead cabinet space. The one thing I wish was a little bit different, but I understand how there's just, a, you know, you can't always have it all every single time is you do kind of lose your kitchen drawers here. And again, I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm willing to even showcase sometimes where a model does fall a little bit short. That being said, overall, for the most part, if you need to get in here, you need to navigate and move around. It is not tricky. We obviously walked right past the refrigerator. That's simple. And this I didn't show you before. This bunk can flip up into cargo mode, which if you notice, gives us this nice long loading space right here. I think that could potentially be suitable 
maybe even for some uh, some kayaks that aren't too big and bulky. Maybe if you stack one on top of the other. So there's an interesting kind of uh, space that you could utilize here. And yes, we definitely can get into the bathroom. So if you need to do that uh, mobile on the road shower acoustics test, it is easy to do. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cars, lasers, airplanes. It's a Duckburg. My solve a mystery or rewrite history. DuckTales. Woo! And hey, as an added bonus, turns out this one is kind of toilet TV certified. Let's go, Browns! Let's go, Browns! Now, in terms of towability, you hear 6,600 pounds. That really sounds very much within the realm of half-ton towability. This is a fairly long camper, though, and depending on how heavy you load and depending on the specific capacities of your truck, it may go beyond what you feel is half-ton towable. A lot of people are going to say it is. A lot of people are going to say it's not. It's, not, it's one of those RVs that's really on that cusp. Now, the wide stance stability axles, those are really going to help us kind of what I call cheat the wheelbase and give us a, uh, a better, smoother towing experience. But again, that kind of, it just depends on personal preference. You see, there is a full picnic table included in this RV. That's what's in the box up there. That aluminum structure. The sticker in that pass-through also indicates that is where a, uh, a solar uh, charge controller could be located. Now, the awning thankfully covers both entry doors. I think that's something they did very, very well here. It's, uh, it's a thing that kind of actually irks me a little bit on a lot of RVs. I would like it if it was somehow able to extend past the camp kitchen. That would be a really long, monstrously long awning though. So I kind of understand why they sort of split the difference here. TV hookups behind the water heater. That by the way is a refrigerator access panel door right there. And I love the improved cooking situation that they've got here. Over the Coleman camp grill, you have one of these uh, handy little griddle stations right here with that handy work table right above those wide stance stability axles that I told you about. If you're not familiar with what those are doing, basically, the camper is going to tow and feel like it's shorter than it actually is. And I guess I'm going backwards around the RV today from what I normally do. So we're going to take a look at the camp kitchen. We got dad's medicine cabinet there for the bottled water and barley pop. Another utensil drawer. And that is a real sink with a drain. And this camp kitchen, I like how it telescopes out, but it also locks in place. And take note of those handy GFI protected outlets right there. If you don't know what GFI protected means, basically it, it'll keep you from uh, making toast in a bathtub, you know, anyway. That big ladder, I, I like the fact that it actually, the rungs go way up over the roof line uh, right, like that, because it actually gives you something very solid to hold on to. This has an aluminum perimeter roof. It is a wood truss roof, but it's built for big heavy duty like snow loads. And you can walk all over that thing if uh, you know you really need to. I love the smart details on this too, like the way that all the connection points, you see the, the outside shower, the black flush, all those things are located right back here in the rear corner, which is the smartest place for them on a camper. Windows are all nicely tinted, and they're sliding panel windows to give us some maximum airflow. Uh, that's something Freedom Express likes to do most of the time. Another thing they do that I really like is their triple sealed slide system with these little T-shaped wiper seals right here. Remember the letter T from Sesame Street? Well, that's kind of what these look like. Now you've got two of those plus a bulb seal on the inside or outside to always give you three points of contact. And you've got this really rough textured wall here to make sure those get wiped in or out. And those are T-shaped, by the way, to give it an extra point of real grip to flip that seal all the way in or out. Because if that seal's not completely flipped in or out, it's going to be a bit of a problem. You see Pete the dog over here overlooking our magnet holdbacks on those baggage doors. And that is a true full pass-through. Up front, we've got ourselves a battery disconnect switch right on the chassis there. Very good for storage time so the battery doesn't get eaten alive. And Coachman does this on their laminated trailers. They put their spare tire on the tongue. It leaves the rear bumper wide open if you choose to add some accessories. It also helps with load equalization. If you don't know what that means, basically weight in front of the camper just tows better than weight behind the camper. So it's going to be a, a, a little smoother towing experience as a result. Power tongue jack doing the heavy lifting for us, getting her hitched up to our uh, weight distribution system. Power awning, we already kind of talked about that. I think. Uh, I, I think we just about got it, folks. What do you think of this thing? Oh my gosh, what a beautiful, glorious day. Compared to the weather that we have had, oh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. <laughs> Don't sue me. Um, the black hockey puck that we're looking at right there, that is a roof attic vent so that heat 
from that builds up from you know the sun blaring on top of this uh, roof doesn't bake you to death from the scalp down that's probably what happened to most of my hair um, <laughs> the uh, other thing here that is a roof solar prep plug and as you can see there is plenty of room here if you want to go nuts with like a, a solar install you you could really have a good time you could put a lot of panels up here or something small like a battery tender or whatever so that's my two cents on it ladies and gentlemen leave us some comments and let me know what do you think about this one what do you like what do you dislike what would you like to see different um any questions you might have we'll always do our best to fill all that stuff in if you appreciate the extra efforts like showing the storage uh showing it in, in uh travel mode if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and follow along and remember that we don't do hidden dealer fees at halo rv we only do everything else I'm going to go take a walk. I'm going to enjoy the sunshine. In the meantime, folks, give us a call when you're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.